restoring yourself to your better you and feeling better than ever before has to do with regaining your hormone balance in the most natural way possible. And so I will share with you today my approach to that. So having your hand out the basic triangle and some words that go with it, we're going to be using that. So here's the triangle. And here's your physical body. Now you already know how to take care of this body, yes? What do you do? You exercise it, maybe? Mm -hmm. Do you rest it, maybe? Mm -hmm. Do you feed it, maybe? You guys don't do anything? <laughs> <laughs> like, like who does what? Come on. I eat a lot of green smoothies. <coughs> green smoothies, what else? Exercise. Exercise, like what? Running. Okay. Treadmill. Treadmill. Meditate. Say again? Meditate. Meditate, okay. Digestive enzymes. Okay. So, so your physical body, you sort of know it exists and you do some stuff for it, right? And then there's that whole hormonal aspect that we talked about and introduced the concept already that if you maintain your hormone levels, you will feel better than ever. What is a hormone? Something that makes you act in a certain way. Thank you. Anyone else? Long protein. A long protein? What long else? Messenger. A hormone is a chemical messenger that controls every important function in your body. From your fat burning to your fat storage, to your mood, to your energy, to your metabolism, and your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels. Can you live without blood pressure and blood sugar, by the way? Uh, yeah. No. It's nice to feel good, right? It's nice to have a healthy metabolism, but you could live without that. So there's this dance between life-sustaining <coughs> hormones and non-life-sustaining hormones. And when they're in balance, you feel amazing. You go from being effed to uneffed. <laughs> Make sense? Hmm. Hormones are chemical messengers that control every important function in your body. 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 Thank you. And if they're chemical messengers, how how would they work? Anyone? Chemical reaction, maybe. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the hormone's a chemical messenger and it works through chemical reactions. This chemical reaction occurs in your biochemistry. You have that in your worksheet. What is your biochemistry? Your biochemistry is that fluid environment inside your cells and around your cells from which you will make hormones and in which you will use hormones. Is that interesting to you? Mm -hmm. Say wow. 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 <laughs> so in actual fact, it's more about your biochemistry than it is about your hormones, because you might just have them and not be able to use them. Say holy cow. Oh. Oh. Holy cow. Your biochemistry is as important as that, and yet there are how many people looking for hormones and wanting hormones. In fact, there's many physicians and practitioners who write hormones for patients. I did that in the menopause clinic and the women's health clinic. I just wrote hormones, and if it didn't work, I doubled it. And if it didn't work again, we got to double it again. We didn't look at biochemistry. We didn't look at the dance between the life-sustaining and the non-life-sustaining hormones. We didn't look at whether you have what you need. We didn't look to see whether you could use what you had. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your biochemistry is shaped by nutrients. Science changes all the time, and it's why I travel as much as I do to update myself. Every day, every week, every month, we're getting newer and newer information about how your body works, what it needs, how your, we can now show you how your thoughts can influence your biochemistry scientifically. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. See, that's cool. That is that's so, very that cool. Is so cool. Thank you. Your genetics. Six months ago, I would have told you, doesn't matter. It's what you do with your body that matters because you have 80% control over how you express your genes. Have you heard that? Your genes are not your destiny. Yes? Mm -hmm. Today I will 
tell you that genetics absolutely influences your biochemistry. We can know about your level of detoxification, what processes work, what don't. Why does this matter? Because not everybody's going to have the same process abnormality. Not everybody's going to deal with their environment in the same way. Guess what? There are 87,000 more toxins and chemicals in the environment today than there were 50 years ago. Say, holy, holy, holy shit. Holy shit. Right. Like, wow, 87,000 more toxins and chemicals, and very, almost none of them actually have ever been tested for long-term safety in humans. Well, and your body is dealing with this ongoingly. At the same time, your food is no longer what it used to be. Do you know this? Yes. Even your green smoothie might not be as healthy as you might think. You have toxins, you have pesticides, herbicides on your fresh produce. Never mind the regular food that most people eat. You've got chemicals, preservatives, food coloring, dyes, all kinds of shit in that yes. stuff. Eat whole food that's organic and the way God made it to keep your biochemistry clear. Your body is very busy dealing with those 87,000 other things coming at it all day, every day. Morning, noon, and night, and while you're sleeping, yes? Yes. Hmm. What else can affect your biochemistry? Electromagnetics, can the... Can. Sleep. Sleep can. Your stress levels. Stress levels can. But what could directly affect your biochemistry that you can go home and look at right now? How about everything you put on your body, from the tip of your hair down to your toenails? Are you spraying yourself with hairspray? Are you washing with shampoos that have weird stuff in it? I've given you a website on your handout called skindeep.org. Go put all your products into there and see if it's actually safe. Or is it polluting your biochemistry even further? Are you exposed to persistent organic pollutants? That's what the POP stands for. Can you repeat that, please? It's on your handout. Yeah, it says POP, but what is Persistent it? organic pollutants. These affect your biochemistry and how your hormones can work. Is this useful so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. What else? How about your home? The stuff you clean your house with, what's floating in the air, what you're soaking in in your bathtub, what you're cleaning your toilets with, what you're washing your dishes with. It gets into your body. It influences your biochemistry. Use clean, natural products, vinegar and water, baking soda, borax. What else? Your environment. Inside your home and outside your home. So if you're living in a newer home, are you off-gassing? There's glues and chemicals and paints and all the stuff that they use to build a new home. Are you breathing this in all night long while you're sleeping? Is it upsetting your body and changing the tipping point of what you can cope with? What about outside? Well, you can't do much about that, but you can work on keeping low the toxic burden of your body. That's what this talk's all about. Lowering the toxic burden of your body. Well, the talk's about many things. Hopefully, I'll get to them all. So can you see this? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think this other side is? The answer's in your, in your hand, though, right? So it's your mental emotional and spiritual aspect of who you are. And if you want total health, you have to pay as much attention to all these things as much as to your physical body and as to this nutritional, biochemical, hormonal aspect. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you have stress, what happens? Cortisol. Okay, so cortisol is A. And adrenaline. And adrenaline is A. Hormone. Hormone. Hormone, thank you. So when you have stress, you make more stress coping hormones, yes? Now if you've had more and more stress, recurrent or ongoing, you make more and more stress coping hormones, yes? Yes? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> we said you make hormones from your biochemistry, which means your biochemistry is now changing. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. If you're making hormones from your biochemistry and it's fed through your nutrient stores, 
then you're depleting your nutrient stores, yes? Okay. So the more stress you have, the less nutrient stores you have. So it turns out that as you get more and more stressed, you run out of what you need when you need it to make what you need when you need it. Yes? Thank you. Aha. Is that an aha? Yeah, that was an aha. Now, how many of you go, I'm so stressed. I have to go look for some vitamin B rich foods, foods rich in magnesium and antioxidant and vitamin A, so that I can replete my stress response and cope with ongoing stress. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you, I check every day, and they still have not made a dark chocolate or red wine that has all those things. <laughs> <laughs> and so, do you see what happens? The more stressed you are, your behaviors drive you to not eat, not eat the right things or whatever, but very few people know instinctively to repeat this whole process so that they can continue to not feel stressed. No, not not feel stressed. That's different. Sorry. I'll correct myself. You repeat yourself so that you can continue to make the hormones you need on an ongoing basis. Make sense? Yes. But here's the deal. Who teaches us on this end. I've never seen a doctor try to teach me that. It's all about a pill for this and a pill yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. And yet someone out there said meditation. Someone else said stress coping. Yes? Mm -hmm. I pay attention to you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of those things are important and vital for optimal hormone balance. Mm -hmm. So I recommend things like yoga, meditation, breathing exercises as part of a total health program. And that's why at our clinic, when we have a total health program, we assess every facet of this triangle to help you get to the next level. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Are you capable of doing all of this on your own by reading books and magazine articles and searching the internet? See, we have ways to check on your genes. We have ways to measure how toxic your biochemistry is. And guess what else? Every person's gonna have a different picture of their biochemistry. Why? Well, why would that be? Because we're all individuals. Because you're all individuals. Thank you. And that's exactly why no two people will get the same result from a diet. You all process stress differently. You all have different genes. You all have different exposures, but your genetics dictates how you can clean out your biochemistry and what you keep in and what you send out. And only when you know that can you create the perfect milieu for proper hormone balancing. 